Hello everyone and welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. I'm Angela Andrew and today we're going to be talking about getting precise color corrections. Specifically we're going to be diving into the color harmony tool and taking a look at what exactly that tool does. Let me go ahead and switch over to Luminar. I want to take a quick moment and say hello to Russell. Hello JGmail28. So glad you guys are able to join me today. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. So I went to the internet and I did a quick search for a color wheel. That's how I got this image into my Luminar library. It's nothing that's built into Luminar, but I did bring that in just as a quick single image edit. So it's right here. I can go here and add image and you can go to the internet and just search for a color wheel. And this is going to be a really great way to not only see what's going on in the color harmony tool, but later on down the road in future episodes, we'll take a look at how other tools affect different tones in your image using this color wheel. I highly encourage you to go download one, put it in your library, and play with it to see how the various tools impact different colors, different tones. It's really eye-opening what's going on. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and jump straight over to the Edit tab and into Color Harmony, which is in the Professionals section, quite a bit down near the bottom. Hello, Pat. Glad you're able to be here today. All right. So Color Harmony is one of those tools that has a lot of different options. I would go so far as to say it almost has four tools in one. You have the top part here, Color Harmony, which has brilliance and warmth, color contrast, split color warmth, and color balance. So let's go ahead and start from the top and work our way down. When you use Color Harmony, you don't have to use all of the sliders within this tool. You can work with separate sections, or maybe you just spend a little bit of time in one section and nothing else. Nothing wrong with that. So let's start with Brilliance, and let's go ahead and move that all the way up to the top. You see those colors get really, really bright, and for lack of a better word, brilliant. And we pull that back. You'll notice that we pull it all the way down to negative 100. It doesn't fully desaturate the image. And this is where it really differs from saturation and vibrance. Just to compare, let's go ahead and scroll up the list and go up to our color tool. And here we have saturation and vibrance. So now let's go ahead and move our saturation tool all the way to the right. You'll see that those colors are very much the same as they are if you move the brilliant slider all the way to the right. But if we move it to the left, it completely takes it down to grayscale and removes all of the saturation. Whereas the brilliance tool just makes it much more subdued and less brilliant. I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that handle to reset that. Vibrance is gonna do something similar. See, it makes the colors a little bit more vibrant, but it's kind of like saturation light. It does, um, Vibrance targets the less saturated colors in an image, whereas saturation targets all of the colors. And again, if we pull that down all the way to zero, or to negative 100 rather, you'll see that it removes all of the vibrance, and it's really keeping a lot more of the colors here in our warm tones, our cool colors, our cool tones, almost completely disappear. I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that to reset, and let's go ahead and scroll back down to our color harmony. So that gives you an idea of what's difference, the difference between brilliance and saturation vibrance. Now let's take a look at warmth. There's a few different places where you can target warm tones in Luminar AI, and this is one of them. So let's say you already set your white balance for your image, but you want to tweak it a little further. This is where you can go and change the overall warmth. You'll see I drag that to the right. Even our white tones here on the outer edge here are turning a little bit yellow. That makes everything much warmer. We pull that to the left. It makes everything cooler. Now I do notice that this white area out here doesn't get too much of the blue, but it does become a more blue shade of white. Let me go ahead and double click that to put that back to neutral. And let's scroll up here to the light tool where we have our white balance. And this temperature slider is very similar. We can take that temperature slider all the way up. You'll see that's actually a much heavier adjustment. And if you pull it all the way the other way, it's a much heavier adjustment down towards the cool tones as well. So you can use these in conjunction with each other to go ahead and set your white balance on your raw image and then go down to your color harmony and further adjust that in a global fashion. Now here's where we're going to start to have some fun is with color contrast. And let me tell you exactly why I got the idea to pull up a color wheel. That's because I went to the help menu and into our user guide. And it, once this loads up, we can go up here and it's fully searchable. I'm going to just type in color harmony and pull up our color harmony tool. Now inside this particular article, we have descriptions of what every single one of these sliders does. So definitely make sure you remember that you can go to that help menu and go to the user guide to find out what a specific tool does in case you forget. 
So here in color contrast, it says objects of the same color will become lighter while objects with the opposite colors on the color wheel will become darker. So I wanted to visually see this happening on a color wheel. So let's go ahead and go back here to Luminar AI. I'm gonna pull my color contrast all the way up to 100, just so we can see what's happening. You'll see everything on this side of the wheel became a lot darker and richer. And now as we turn that hue, you'll see that things on the opposite side of the color wheel were losing contrast and gaining contrast on that opposite side of the color wheel. It's really cool how that happens. Now on any given image, you're probably not gonna have this color contrast amount at 100, but this lets you know what that tool is doing. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull that down a little bit. Let's go ahead and pull this back you know, to a more reasonable level. And then you can see how that might affect the different tones in your image whether you're wanting, you know, depending on what color ranges you want to target. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and double click the handles on both of these to reset them back to zero. And hello, Jerry, or Gary or Jerry, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, glad you're able to join us today. All right, let's look at split color warmth. This is another fun one. So let's go back over to our user guide and this will tell you exactly what these sliders do. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's do the visual representation again here on our color wheel. We're going to be targeting first our warm colors and our warm colors are going to be this side of the color wheel and I can move that down and you'll see everything becoming cooler and then everything becoming warmer and it's really targeting this side of the color wheel. If I double click on that handle to reset it and then go down to my cool tones, we'll see that it's going to affect the opposite side of the color wheel and make our cool tones cooler and then make our cool tones warmer. So. It's really fun if you want to target different areas of an image and a type of image where this would be really helpful is if you have a scene where perhaps you've got some really nice warm sunlight, but then you have an area that's in the shade and shade tends to have a cooler color tone to it. So you could go ahead and just selectively warm up those cool tones to more closely match the other tones in your scene. It's very helpful for that kind of thing. And then down here at the bottom, we have our color ballads. Now this one gives you the option of targeting, targeting your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. Now to go ahead and kind of show you what's gonna be effective in this image, I'm gonna go up here to view and show histogram. And you'll see our histogram has most of these little spikes right here towards the middle. So this image is almost completely made up of midtones. We've got a little spike here on the right, which means that's a really bright highlight area. And that's gonna be this white border. So we kind of can disregard that. And really what we're targeting here is a bunch of midtones. So let's go ahead and set this to midtones where we can see the full effect of what's going on. What this is gonna do is change your hue similar like it would in the hue tool in HSL. So let's go ahead and move those reds and so we can take those tones, make them more blue, make them more red. All right, there we go. Move that all the way to the right. You see it's really affecting those red tones and then we're affecting more of those blue tones. All right, and magenta to green, this is gonna take those magenta tones and make them more magenta. Hold on, my mouse is being silly here. Go ahead and grab that. You'll see those magenta tones becoming much more strong and move it the opposite direction, the green tones become more strong. And then similarly with our blues and yellows. So we go make that really warm golden tone, pull that back and we get much more of those blue tones up here. All right. Now you can always target different areas of an image. So this image, like I said, has mostly midtones. But if you have an image that has, you know, different areas, we have shadows, highlights, and midtones, you can target these areas separately to really refine the color in your image. Hey Brian, glad you're able to join us today. All right. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to pop back over to my catalog and let's actually edit an image. So this image I edited completely with just color harmony. I didn't use any other tools. This is the edited version. Let me switch back there. And then here's, let me wait for it to load, give it a second. Almost there. You can see the Luminar AI thing up there, uh, the gradient moving. That means it's loading and processing. So here's my before image, the good image. It's a little bit flat. And with just color harmony, I was able to really bring it to life. So let's go ahead and take a look at how I did that. I'm gonna go here to the edit tab and I'm going to go into my history. You can see all of the adjustments that I already made, but we're gonna do them again. So I'm gonna go back to my original and then back to my tools and down to color harmony. So let's go ahead and have a little bit of a play and see what we can do here. I'm gonna make this image a little bit more brilliant. You'll see just that one slider, that really perked up the image. 
I don't want to take it too far because I'm trying to keep it natural. I just want to enhance what's naturally there. I also think this could use a little bit of warmth. You see how we have all these beautiful warm tones here in the wood, and I just want to give those a little bit of an accentuation. So bring that up maybe right about there. Now the image still feels a little bit flat, and we can work on that with our color contrast. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that amount up just a little bit. You see, as I bring this up, the effect is very strong and you don't want to have it go overboard. You want to keep it looking natural. So I'm going to keep this at a fairly low amount and then I can choose which hues I want to make more contrasty. So I can move my hue slider along all of those colors and see what really works for this image. And I think perhaps right about there looks beautiful. Now let's just see how far we've come with these couple of adjustments we've made. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off, come back on again. It's a natural, subtle adjustment, but definitely improved. Let me take a quick moment and look at the comments here and see if there's anything, any questions that you guys have. Make sure you put your questions into the chat and I will do my best to answer them while we're live. Uh, there was a question asking if there was a link for my color wheel. You know what, I did not think to bookmark the link for that color wheel. I just went to my search engine and searched for a color wheel image and just about any wheel in there that you pull up will work and there are thousands of them out there. So just grab one that you like, plop it into Luminar AI and, and have a play with it and see what those various tools are doing to the colors. All right, let's see here. And Kai says, I asked this on another video, did what cursor highlighter am I using? Is it Pro Mouse? Because it seems to work really well in spite of some complaints. The one I'm using is actually called Cursor Pro, and I found it in the Apple App Store, uh, the Mac App Store, and it was pretty inexpensive, but it is a paid app. So hopefully that helps. And uh, Pat, I'm glad you're enjoying this lesson. All right, let's continue on with this gorgeous beverage. And, you know, I kind of just want to have a sip of that right now. All right, let's go ahead and work with our split color warmth. So like I said earlier, this warm slider is gonna target those warm tones, the cool slider is gonna to target the cool tones. So I can take that slider, I can warm up the already warm tones, or I could cool them off if I wanted to. Now you'll see that's making that actually a little bit more flat if I take it warm. I'm gonna go ahead and warm that up a little bit, and I like what that's doing to the grain of the wood. Everything just looks a little bit more inviting and tasty. Now let's take a look at our cool tones. There aren't as many cool tones in this image, but if you look closely, some of the grain here in the wood actually does have a little bit of a cool tone to it. So I'm gonna actually pull that back and forth and see what I like here. Maybe pull that a little bit more cool for the cool tones. And you'll see that even brought out some of the, the cool tones there in the reflections there, and even a little bit of reflections here in the top of the beer. So let's go ahead and see where we've come so far. There's the before and there's the after. And you know what, I'm really not liking how the blue is coming out on top of the foam hit there. Kind of makes it a little bit unappetizing to me. So I'm just gonna reset that, pull that back to center and keep just those warm tones. I think that looks awesome. Now let's take a look at our histogram and see where we can make the most impact with that color balance since we can target our shadows, highlights and midtones separately. All right, so this image, I see that I have a lot here towards the shadows and midtones. So that's where we're gonna be able to make the biggest impact. Let's go ahead and first start with our shadows. And we can take this cyan red, move that back and forth and see if that makes any difference that we like. And I think, you know, I like that right at the middle. It doesn't really help the image. We can take a look at the magentas and the greens. And you know, just a hint towards the green there, I think is nice. It actually took a little bit of that overly red edge out of, out of it. And I think that looks really good. Now let's take a look at our yellows and our blues. That's making those yellows look almost green. I'm not really liking that. And you know what, if we take that just a hair towards the blue, I like the richness that that's adding. So I'm gonna keep that there very subtle. And now let's go ahead and see what we can do with our mid-tones. Again, with these sliders, a lot of times, I like to just kind of move them back and forth in a fairly dramatic way to see what it's gonna do and then pull way back to, to actually have my final edit. And that way I get an idea of what the final result is gonna be. And you can always back it off a little bit. I think backing the mid-tones off a little towards the cyan actually looks good. Take a look here at our magentas and greens. I'm gonna keep that one straight in the middle and you can always reset a slider by double clicking on that handle. And let's take a look at our blues and yellows. You know, I think I'm gonna keep that very slight toward the blue. 
I think that looks really good. All right, so let's see what we've done here. Here's the before and here's the after. And I think that makes a very appetizing, beautiful looking image. And all we did was work with our color harmony. There's so many wonderful tools in here. So I hope you get in there and explore them. And I highly recommend checking out that color wheel. Now, one final thing we can do is I'm gonna go back to my catalog and I have another beverage here next to it. This is from the same photo shoot. And what if I wanna have similar toning and a similar look between the two image? I can go ahead and right click on my edited image, grab adjustments and copy adjustments. And now I can right click on the second image and then go to adjustments and paste adjustments. And that's gonna give them both a very cohesive look. So if you're doing a photo shoot for a client, you're gonna to wanna to have a series of images that look similar across the board and syncing the adjustments is a great way to do that. You can always go in and update them and tweak them later. For instance, if I go here into the one we just copied the adjustments to, I can go over to edit. And if I feel like perhaps I went a little bit too overboard on that brilliance once it loads up, I can pull that back a little bit or I could even warm it up a little bit more if I think that this particular image needs it. So you can always change and update those things later on, but it gets you closer to your starting point if you, when you sync those um, adjustments across multiple images, especially if they're in a cohesive series. So I hope that gives you guys some food for thought and you know a beer for thought and things that you can do with the color harmony tool. It's such a powerful bit of uh, technology to have in your toolbox and it can really make your images come alive in a way that the other tools can't. It works beautifully with everything else, but just by itself, you can see how very, very powerful it is. So here was the before and the after of this one. And again, it just makes those colors come to life. So hope you guys enjoyed this. I wanna wish you guys a wonderful afternoon. I will be back with you on Thursday. Vanelli will be with you tomorrow. If you guys like these videos, make sure you give us those thumbs up. That lets us know that you want us to keep staying here. And if you have any questions, comments, ideas for future topics, make sure you post those in the comments or in the chat. We read all of those and appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.